open the data set in OpenRefine, you're going to see a couple columns like username, user location. User location is probably the main column we're going to be using for this, uh, this episode because as you know, in Twitter, you can put anything for user location. You can put Atlanta, you can put London, you can put everywhere, you can put the world, you can put something that's not even a location. So it's really free form text. You can also put in, this data set also contains a column called hashtags. So as you know, you can write any hashtag you want in Twitter and there's no real standardization to the spelling of hashtags, to the letters you use. So there's a lot of just hand enter data here that isn't consistent across all these around 50,000 rows of, of data. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at my user created column. This is the date that the user of that tweet, they, the day they created their Twitter account. And you'll notice that for these first few rows, the date format is in the European format standard, which is uh, day slash month slash year. And if I want to convert this to the US format for month slash day slash year, I have to do some data transformations. And I did a little kind of transforming of the date, the underlying CSV before um, doing this recording, but basically anything any tweet that happened on February 10th, 2021 will have this user created date that is in the European format. And our job is to convert this European format into the US format. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually convert the date column into a date format. Right now, this is, I think, considered text. And so to make this a more rich date format, I'm gonna click on the drop down here, date go to edit cells, common transforms, then go to to date. And once you do that, OpenRefine basically goes through the entire list of rows and converts that column into a date format. And you can know that it's converted when it has like this green, I think it's called like Zulu format. And this is basically like a timestamp format that you typically see with like um, SQL or some other program where you need a really strong type for the column. So now I'm going to do a quick uh, facet, uh, timeline facet on this column. And on the left hand sidebar, you can see the scatter plot and you can see like when the, when tweets were happening. So if I just click on this left hand, uh, left sidebar here, I can drag and drop this, this thing and, and basically filter down the list of tweets that when, when they were tweeted, so it looks like not many tweets were tweeted after February 26th. There's only 5,774 rows. I only want to look at the tweets on February 10th. So I'm going to filter this down here and just drag these sidebars here. The problem is I can't get exactly to February 10th. And so what I'm going to do is actually use a basic text filter um, to filter down my data. Um, so I'm just gonna click outside this date and go to date again, go to text filter. I basically want all tweets matching 2021-02-10. So I have 3,500 matching rows. And with these matching records, I am now going to do a transformation on the user created column. And that user created column is Going to, I'm going to click on edit column, or sorry, edit cells, transform. And you'll see here that this, this now contains a preview of the current date format, which is day slash month slash year, which is a European format. And I want to convert it into a US format, which is month slash day slash year. So this is where you can actually do a little bit of scripting using OpenRefine's general refine expression language. It's called Grel. It's really similar in my opinion to JavaScript. And I'm gonna do, so I can reference this column of European date formats. Again, this is only filtered down to 3,500 matching rows. I'm gonna do value.split. So this splits the, the current column by a given delimiter. I'm gonna say just by a slash and so now you can see in the preview pane, it shows me an array of three values of the 
days and the month and the year. And now I can just reference the the month first by putting in that one uh, value within the brackets. And then I can say plus double uh, quote slash to get in that slash as the for that slash and the date. I'm just going to copy this again and say plus the same value split and delete this one at a zero plus and then make this a two. And so I basically wrote the script in the transformation box to take that European format and convert it into the US format. And if I hit OK, OpenRefine just applied that transformation to 3,400, should have been 3,500 rows. I'm not sure why it didn't do the whole rows. But it took all those user-created dates and converted them into the US format that I like. And from this point on, I can now just click on the dropdown, go to Edit Cells, Common Transforms, and convert this to the date format that we like. And actually, I'm going to remove this text filter too, so I can do this for the entire column to date. And this should do apply this to all 48,000 rows. And what I really like about OpenRefine here is that I don't have to write a separate formula like in Excel to change the state format. It just does it into that actual column itself. And it does it really fast. I just did it to 45,000 cells in this column. So that's a really common pattern of just cleaning up date formats. And I really like this um, other feature, which is this clustering and editing groups of values. This is probably the main feature I use in OpenRefine. Probably the main thing you'll be using as well if you need to kind of figure out what type of groups to your data or clusters that your data falls in. And so you'll notice that in the user location column, we have all different kinds of cities, locations, random things written here. We have Australia, Moon, Atlanta, Pakistan, Las Vegas. But people are writing whatever they want here. So how do we cluster this column to, to create more standardized locations in this column? So I can now click on this dropdown and user location, go to edit cells, or sorry, edit, is it edit cells or is it, I think it's edit cells, and then go to cluster and edit. And you're going to get this clustering of all these rows where there seem to be inconsistencies with the spelling. You see how there's a bunch for Lagos, Nigeria. Notice how in New York City, there's 14 rows that have New York City capital letters. Then you have one that has New York City, but the city is lowercase. So you can see how this can be a really kind of mind-numbing process. And the important thing here is that if we're really messy data set like this, I would actually use this rows and cluster filter where I can move this low to the right and look at the really major data inconsistencies that are happening across this column. So you can see here, there's actually 266 rows that have the word New York, but then there's 26 rows that have just new and then lowercase New York. And the idea here is that you can click on these checkboxes to merge all these values into this one value that's standardized across all these inconsistencies. This is like the most important thing I think for using OpenRefine is because if you have handwritten, quote unquote handwritten data like this, this is a really easy way to clean stuff up. And if you have situations where you think the algorithm is not finding the right matches, you can also click on these different algorithms up here, method, king function. I don't really know what all these different things mean, but this basically gives you different algorithms to cluster your messy data set into different groups so that you can now go in and figure out how you can um, remove all those inconsistencies, like this one right here. Wow, there's a whole bunch of crap here. But um, yeah, like a lot of people write not financial advice. So you probably could cluster all these into just one value, which is not financial advice. So if I click on merge, this column is merge. If I just m say merge for all these different permutations of not financial advice, I can say merge, selected and close. And basically OpenRefine goes through all those individual rows and mass edited those cells so that they contain the consistent spelling of not financial advice for me. By far the most most amazing feature in OpenRefine in in my 
in my perspective. Finally, the another big feature that is mentioned in OpenRefine, actually rather this is in Excel, is the rich data types feature where you can project out like the stock price and the closing price and you can get the different parts of geography ex like extracted out into your file. Similarly, in OpenRefine, they have this notion of reconciliation, which I think is like a terrible name for this feature. But essentially, you have all these various different reconciliation services that you can use to augment and enrich your data set. So for instance, I have this user location column. Let's say I want to get additional data about the city Atlanta or the city London. I can click on this drop down here, go to reconcile. Actually, I'm going to use a different file for this because I want this to work relatively fast. I have 35 rows in this data set. And I'm going to click on user location. Close this out. Go to user location. Go to edit cells and then go to, sorry, go to reconcile and then go to start reconciling. You'll see these different services. These are basically just like APIs that you can use to augment your data. I'm going to click on Wikidata here and it's going to think a little bit. And what's amazing is that there's so many different services you can actually implement with reconciliation in OpenRefine that you can't really see right now in Excel. Um, actually, I don't think this was the right, let's see here, let's do this one more time. User location, reconcile. Uh, let's try this one more time. There we go. So now we have, I want to reconcile each cell to one of, to the city, which is from the Wikidata basically API. On the right hand side here, you can say also use relevant details from other columns. This, this basically gives you an ability to feed in other data into the request to the API so that I can better find a match for you. I'm going to leave this alone for now. I have city selected. I'm going to hit start reconciling. And this is basically now reaching out to the Wikidata API, I think. And it's going to start trying to find relevant matches to enrich this user location column. And I know a lot of this is going to be crap because, you know, people wrote things like MLB, NFL in that column, which doesn't really make sense. But let's take a look and see what it brings back when we have like pretty proper cities like Atlanta, London written out over here. So it's getting to complete. So this thing, it does take a long time, especially if you have a lot, a lot of rows, but for us, we only have 35. And you can see here for Atlanta, it has a perfect match. So if I click on Atlanta, it will bring me to that actual Wikidata listing for this specific city and a bunch of other columns I can probably pull into my OpenRefine data set. For instances like Europa, it doesn't know if this is really the right uh, match. And in this case, like Europa, if I click on this, this is bringing me to a wiki data set for a launch vehicle, which is obviously not correct. But if I wanted to tell OpenRefine, I think this is the right value to apply to only this row of data, I can click on the one checkbox. If I want to say this Europa data value is the right rich value to use for all rows in my data set, I can click on the box with the two checkboxes. So this, what, this is a really neat feature because it brings the data cleaning f aspect of OpenRefine to the, um, the ability to find the rich data type for your value. This user location best candidate score facet is also pretty neat because I can now increase the numeric score on how likely or how confident the algorithm thought the match was. And you can notice here when I do that, it kind of removes out some of these crappy like matches like for Nova, if I increase this up a little bit, it will remove that Nova. Oh no, it's still kept it there, but I think some other values are removed. But you notice that Atlanta and London still stayed in this data set because they found a really, the, the service found a really strong match and was able to reconcile the Wikidata data set and my data set. And now if I want to add additional values or properties of the city Atlanta to my data set, I can click on the user location now, go to 
um, edit column and then add columns from reconciled values, I get this new box that pops up and you can see all these different columns of data I can now add to my open refined data set like, I don't know, coordinate location, inception, postal code. I'm going to click on head of government and you're going to see a nice preview of what my data set will look like with this head of government property before I actually commit it to my, my file. I'm just gonna hit okay. And now you can see OpenRefine added this new column data set data for me called, well, it's gonna take some time to think, but it's gonna give me a new column called head of government. And now I can see for the location Atlanta, uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms is the is the mayor. If I click on this link, it's going to bring me to the actual wiki data listing for that rich data type. And then this is also now its own rich data type, so I can now project this column out and get other aspects of this column into OpenRefine. So pretty neat feature here for getting enriching your data set um, beyond just uh, what's available in your in your CSV that you've loaded into OpenRefine. So those are some of the main features that I use in OpenRefine and some other features that compare that are, I know a lot of people out there are like, oh, well, Power, Power Query does this and that and OpenRefine doesn't do this and that. Again, this is a free tool and I think if you want to do 80 to 90% of what you did, what you need to do day to day in terms of clean data, OpenRefine will get you there. So for instance, if you want to, one of the popular features in, in Power Query is being able to look at the different steps in your data transformation process. Same thing in OpenRefine. You can click on this undo redo tab and it gives you all the different steps that you took and you click on each one to go backwards and forwards in your data transformation process. And more importantly, you can click on this extract button and you can get this kind of JSON like, like a, uh, JSON-like code, if you will, that you can copy. And the next time you need, to do, you need to apply the same data transformations to your CSV or whatever data file you have, you can just copy this, this JSON code, paste it into your OpenRefine project, and then hit, on, hit apply. And you will basically walk through all the different steps of your data transformation process, just like a macro would in Excel, just like the different steps would, would do for you in Power Query. Um, additionally, I also really like the ability to export the OpenRefine data set into different formats. And while these are what's listed here on OpenRefine, the tool itself, you have Excel file, HTML table, Google Sheets. OpenRefine is a open source tool, so I'm sure there's a ton of people in the community who have built connectors to additional tools that you might use on your day-to-day -day job, like other online SaaS tools that you need to get clean data in um, from a data set. So could be a nice alternative to other data transformation tools that you might be using that um, cost a lot of money. And finally, one, one feature that's not available in OpenRefine that's easily doable is merging different tables of data, data together. In Power Query, this is the ability to basically denormalize or unpivot your data. Not easily doable in Power Query from what I know. I think you have to do something really specific with the Grel uh, co coding language. So that's um, a little outside the bounds of what you can do in OpenRefine. So long story short, I continue to use OpenRefine for cleaning up large, messy data sets. I really like the ability to filter and sort and facet the data because you can explore a data set in ways that you can't do easily in Excel or Google Sheets.